Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Woolly Thistle Shopcast. I'm your host Corinne, I own the Woolly Thistle and this is our product development manager Maggie. Hello. Who is here to talk about all things Woolly, Rhinebeck, blankets and all other good things. And yeah. also uh, we have uh, contributions today. Yeah, we have some guest contributors. We have um, uh, Kelsey yes. with us yes. and Emma and uh, Knitting Kim. Yoga with Kim. Yep. We also have a guest contributor um, contribution um, from t two delightful ladies named Barb and Shreka. Um, so we so have a lot to yeah, get through, is, which is, is really, really great. Um, we're just off uh, coming down, or maybe we're still on a high <laughs> <laughs> from Rhinebeck. Uh, we just got back last night. We were with Emma, Caitlin, and Caitlin's mom, Debbie, and uh, Kelsey. Kelsey, and yeah. we had a great time. Yeah. It, it was, was it was really, really wonderful. It really, really was. It was good. I yeah. really enjoyed it, and now I'm really tired. Yeah. You can tell <laughs> I'm tired, but really, really, like... Jazzed <laughs> yes, yes, I'm really, really tired and really, really tired. Yeah. Yes, I, I had a great time there. I really, yeah. really enjoyed it. So yeah. this is actually a really good example of like introvert extrovert. Like, because mm -hmm. on the way home yesterday, you were good. I was still you were, extroverting you were really, on my really, really good. Yeah. And, I and introverts can get really filled yeah. up and really excited. And I felt too. filled up. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and then now you're just like, I need to recoup. I need, but can't. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm married to an introvert. I totally know, even though I'm like the complete opposite. Yes, you're the otter. You're yeah. like raring to go. I, I heard you before I saw you this morning, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> no. I can say that to you. Obnoxiously energetic. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. I love yes. that. I would love to yeah, be yeah. more of an extrovert, but I, I had the best time. I yeah. really, really enjoyed Whereas it. Whereas it's funny, I felt like in the weeks leading up to Rhinebeck, like I hadn't had enough social engagement and yeah. I was sort of petering out. Yeah. And, so this sort of got you. And this is like, yes, yes okay. I'm really, really, really good now. So we, we can rent you out to go to things. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Represent. Yes. Get your yes. cup filled. So we will talk more about that and we will be running off to visit with various contributors and then we've got blankets to show you because they're going to be live in the shop by the time you see this. Today at noon. Today at noon. Yes, yes. it is a time launch. So today at noon, Eastern time, okay. um, Donegal, Studio Donegal Blankets go live. Should we quickly talk about what you're wearing? And yes, what I'm we wearing? should, yeah. I think, um, so I'm wearing my vanilla fluff. Yay. Um, it's lovely. I've been grabbing it's it more fluffy. and more this fall. Yes, um, I love that you're wearing a shirt under Yeah, it. so I've started styling it um, over a shirt. Yeah. Um, and it looks so good. I like this shirt. It has yeah. little elephants, but it is. It's really cozy. I leave the shirt sticking out the bottom. Yeah. And you look lovely. Yeah. You it's look perfect. smart and comfortable. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's kind of how I feel. Like, I feel like I'm put together. Yeah. Yeah, um, you but you're know, comfy. But I'm comfy. And warm and snuggly. Very yes. warm, which is nice. I'm wearing, is it the seaweed? Sea, seaweed slipover? Is it the seaweed slipover? It seaweed or seaway? No, I think seaweed. I think it's seaweed, and it's by seaweed. Malcolm, I mean, Wilma Malcolmson. <laughs> I nearly said Malcolm Williamson. <laughs> Again, <Sorry about>. tired. <laughs> so Wilma Malcolmson designed this, and it's in uh, Jameson Spindrift. And I saw quite a yeah. few of these at Rhinebeck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah we yeah, saw yeah. some gorgeous sweaters. So many. We tried to take some photos. Yeah. We stalked people. <laughs> yeah, and we will have a little bit of Rhinebeck footage. Caitlin was really good about uh -huh. taking a footage. I was terrible. It took hardly any photos. Um, I did. I took some. I even got them the right way round for YouTube. I think Caitlin did more for Instagram, which is good. Yeah. So you'll find us in both places. Yeah, and it'll be a mix here. Like we'll we'll put both. In yeah. Like that. This is Caitlin here with a little bit of Rhinebeck footage and recap for you. This uh, 2023 New York Sheep and Wool Festival took place over the weekend and some of the Wooly Thistle team was there. My mom and I met up with them, Green, Maggie, Kelsey, and Emma, for a nice time at the Dutchess County Fairgrounds. Uh, we arrived on Saturday morning, and it was a bit rainy to start, but caught a little bit of the, the llama and goat parade. Um, so far, the hand knits are mostly under the raincoats, but um, the weather would shape up over the weekend. We um, first stopped in to say hi to our friends at Junction Fiber Mill. This is their first year vending. They, of course, make making tracks and farm fresh, which we carry in the shop. We 
we had a meetup. Kareen and Maggie especially were hosted by Bat and Kill Fibers booth and a lot of um, Willie Thistlers came to say hello. That was Jess with her handmade backpack and little Augie the sheep. Bat and Kill is the mill for our Rambler yarn and they were nice to um, set up a display of that for our yarn for everybody to get to see in person. Um, the ring continued on Saturday but there were still just lots of crowds of uh, people there to enjoy the yarn, the shopping, the community, uh, the, the wool products. We had a meetup at one o'clock on the hill and a lot of Wooly Thistle fans and community members came to say hello to us. We saw Veda there with her Dun Robin and Faith and oh we just met so many kind customers, some husbands and oh, there's a beautiful Athmele sweater. Um, it just yeah, that was such a special thing to get to see so many of the people who watch the Shopcast and just know us. This is uh, Starcroft. It's the company that makes one of the yarns in Mary Jane and Gudrun's new book. That was her best uh, pattern there. Here's day two, Kareen with a big bag of Rambler to restock cart booth. Then we uh, visited some of the sheep barns. You know, farmers bring their sheep for judging and that's kind of the premise of the entire festival. So here's a bunch of sheep breeds being um, given the final judging. We visited with some of the other sheep. Here's a border Lester <laughs> taking it easy. Some really impressive merino sheep with their horns and um, just sheep breeds of all shapes and sizes. Uh, you can visit with some of them. And then there was a, a big section of Angora goats. They're just uh, standing there growing the mohair, <laughs> looking really fuzzy. Uh, here's another border Lester and a different color. And um, yeah, really, really calm, friendly sheep. There's also sheepdog exhibits, uh, some herding. Here they're they're doing kind of a, a frisbee show. There's lots more to see than just the yarn shopping. And here the, the sun started to come out. This is still on, on day two. We're in the cider donuts line. <laughs> and we visited the book building where Mary Jane and Gudrun were there with all of the samples from their Grand Shetland Adventure Knits book. They were selling the last couple of copies as we were there saying hello. So congrats again to them. We also visited the Pom Pom Magazine booth. These are samples from the newest issue 47 on pre-order right now. Some really lovely things from that issue. Uh, it was another wonderful festival. So glad we got to attend and share a little bit with all of you. Uh, meet some of you and uh, just celebrate the woolly wool that we love. So go get yourself a snack like this little goat and thanks so much for watching the Shopcast. Yeah, and I think Ringback, the weather was pretty uh, Saturday, Friday and Saturday. We went to Woolen Folk on Friday. Thankfully, we didn't go for the weather. No, we did not, so. uh, but we still went. I think a lot of people yeah. maybe didn't show up because of the weather on Saturday. It might have been yeah, a bit quieter. I, I was expecting absolutely bananas crowds. In, in the barns, I thought it would be like this, and it wasn't too bad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was great. It was busy, but I thought it'd be even busier. Right. Um, And so Saturday was nice. It was blowy and clouds in the sky it was great that was good I mean, sunday yes that's yeah. what i mean yeah yeah it's we we attended an event on friday too which well, made folk. it felt feel yes a little, yes exactly yeah so it's easy to get Where am i going now so, like exactly so and and that was really <laughs> rainy for part of it yeah so, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So. very soaking wet yes but and looking fabulous yeah, everybody looked time. great. Um, thank you to everybody who stopped us and said hello. Yes, that um, was really, really wonderful. fun. You know, after COVID, I mean, yes, I've been to Rhinebike last year, but I don't know. After COVID, 
as an introvert, it's even more difficult to sort of uh, just be in the, the whole, you know, swing of it um, because you get used to just not being there. Although that must have been terrible for you. I actually quite enjoy, you know, my solitude, but um, it, it was it was just sort of like I was out of the habit of of seeing lots of people and people saying hello. But it was lovely. Yeah. And I absolutely love meeting each and every one of you for sure. Yeah. Yeah. As I've gotten a little bit older, I'm good. I'm much better about downtime. And I think, too, I was a stay at home mom for years. And that that <laughs> that sort of it helped me adjust and appreciate more. Yeah. Um, downtime. More downtime. But I definitely need Yes, that. I got home and realized that the kids are off school today too, which didn't help my <laughs> I realized that last my plans. Time. Yes, cool. yes. All right, anyway. Anyways. So a little bit of housekeeping, uh, just to remind you that we're no longer running ads on here. So you're getting this ad free, which is really nice. Yeah. And help us out by shopping at the Willie Thistle. We had a rambler at Rhinebeck. We did. <laughs> I feel like before we segue to that, <laughs> um, we should say that um, if you're new to the Willie Thistle and the channel, that we are an online yarn store located in New Hampshire. Thank you. And we specialize in European, British, Scandinavian wools. Woolly wool. Um, woolly wools. Um, and uh, this podcast, and we, we ask that to support this podcast, that you pop by the shop. Yeah. Um, we hop on our newsletter and maybe do a little shopping. Yeah. Yeah. Join us on uh, the social medias. We're everywhere. Thank yeah. you very much. Yes. Yeah. So, and we were running a PIPs, a double PIPs thing over the weekend. So PIPs are, are our points in progress. So every time you shop with us, you get points. So make sure you are in that program. Uh, once you're in it, it will automatically give you PIPs every time you join. And once in a great while, we will double up pips or do something like that. And mm -hmm. while we were at Rhinebeck, we knew that you would have FOMO. So we gave you double pips so that you, you could shop with us. You might not have had FOMO. You maybe, might have had maybe FOMO. Maybe that event's not your jam, which is totally fine. But, but if it was, way, and you weren't there. Pips. But they can still have FOMO too. Yeah. Yes. So I would have had FOMO if I wasn't there. Yeah, I'm sure I would have too. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you're right. You're yeah. right. Double pips. It's, it's gone now. It's done. Yeah. But... Uh, we did that. That was great. So we're going to start with a winner. Um, to, today's winner, uh, the first winner, we have a couple winners today. The first winner is at Diane B1864. And Diane says, love seeing the triangles and bunting. Yes. That would put a smile on my face every day it does. walking into your shop. All of your sweaters and cardigans are lovely from all of your contributors, but the Fair Isle ones on Rachel's video were over the top beautiful. <laughs> we agree, Diane. Yeah. Um, Diane, you have won a $25 gift card to Hooray! the Woolly Thistle. If you can send us an email, um, info at thewoollythistle.com, put prize winner in all caps in the subject line, we will get you your $25 gift card. Yes, and if you want to be in the running for a prize yourself, just leave us a comment down below and we pick them randomly, usually two every show. Mm -hmm. Just want to mention too, the last episode was a bonus where we had an interview with Gudrun Johnson and MJ Mucklestone uh, for their new book, Grand Shetland Adventure Knits. We saw them, actually I only saw MJ, I didn't catch up with Gudrun, but they were yeah. they were at Rhinebeck signing books, um, but thank you for shopping with us. Um, we're, everybody appears to be very excited mm -hmm. about this book and for good reason. I saw some of the samples as well, yeah. just beautiful knits. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was nice to see them and it was a great interview. I really appreciated them spending time with the Woolly Thistle to talk about their new book, which was lovely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are we going to do now, Maggie? Um, Why don't, do we want to start, do you have any like knits in progress? I do. Do we want to start with that? Yeah. You know, I'm still knitting on my sweater. I'm not going to show that because I'm, I think, I don't think, oh. I think I'm not much further up okay. um, than I was before. But I did cast on some socks. And in true style or true fashion for me, by the time I got to where I needed to be socially knitting, I was trying to do a heel. Oh. So, you know, I did all the social knitting. Yeah. And socially. But anyway, this is a, <laughs> this is a sock. It's called, um, it's West Shasha Spinners Signature 4 Ply in the new J color way, which I think is really lovely. It is. I'm enjoying I it. I think it will pop a pink. Yes, pop a pink. Um, yeah, I like it. So I'm just doing a heel flap, just turned the heel and I need to start working on the gusset and yeah, that's where I'm at with that. So right. first sock. How about you? Are you knitting? Um, I, I am knitting. So I'm knitting something that's going to look super familiar. Um, cause it's another Paul Clay. Um, <laughs> finally, I picked up that yoke for anybody who's been watching. I had, I've knit this, this is the second one. Um, with the exact same colors because yep. I messed up the sizing on the yoke. I should have gotten up the needle size. Oh, well, okay. Except I didn't. So I, sh I, <laughs> it's, it's not a very interesting story. 
Except that sometimes I don't read details accurately, and so yeah. it, it was a little tight. It still wouldn't fit me, so I had to go up a needle size, and I didn't in the yoke, and so... But so, it, it was too pretty to rip out. Yeah. So I'm knitting, the, I'm completing this one for my youngest daughter. Yeah. Um, and You'll be yeah, so I've just been working down the body. I made good progress this weekend. You too. did. There was, uh, there was good progress. There was some yeah. good knitting time in the weekend. Because I had maybe an inch at the beginning of the weekend. Yeah. So that's really not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was without any car knitting. Usually I'm car knitting. Yeah, I noticed that. You weren't knitting the, in the car. The roads were a bit too yeah, windy. They are. Not highway enough. Yeah, the only um, way. The easiest way to get through New Hampshire is north to south on highways. If you're yeah. trying to go across, it can be, woo, 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 yeah. and that's what we were doing. So, yeah, yeah I don't have anything super exciting. Uh, no, yeah. no further development. I do have a tiny little FO. Yay. Um, so, These are lovely. So I finished some little fingerless mitts. Gorgeous. Um, I believe it's the Star Power pattern, but we'll put the name on the screen here. Yeah. It's a free pattern. And I knit this with um, Wensleydale Sheep Shop Tweed, yeah. which is the yarn featured in our 12 Days of Christmas yes, box, which, which you can still see that fun. red box there. Yeah. Um, so the, the 12 Days box comes with six balls mm -hmm. um, in colors of our choosing. I knit these with two balls, like, um, you know, 225 one of each color. Gram. 225 yeah. gram balls, and I still have leftover. Um, they're beautiful. So they they do a little fit. petite from well, they are a little hands. petite. I think they are supposed to be you know like smaller. Yep. Um, very yeah. pretty. The the yarn so, feels uh, nice and smooth and quite quite yeah. woolly. Wensleydale is a quite long wool. Sheepy. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, really nice. They do. So yeah, these are really cute. So yeah. yes, we do have some twelve days of Christmas, twelve days of holiday boxes left. You get six little balls um, of of different colors of uh, Wensleydale, and then six other little gifties in there, and you can open one a day or yeah. do it however you want to. But they were really cute. They yeah. were fun. Knit. I would probably go up one more needle size if I were if to make future. it again. What, but... what do you know? What needle size you used? I think I used, um, I think it recommends like a one and a half or a two. Okay. And so I knit them with sock. a two, but I would probably go to like a two and a half. Yeah. Yeah. So. Really nice. Well done you. So, That's yeah, lovely. So I finished these. They were quick. Yay for little projects. Little projects. Yes. Should we go to. Um... Let's go to Barb and Shreka. They were inspired by Caitlin to um, share their um, fair entries. Oh, good. Um, and so they're, they're going to share their, their winnings and um, ribbons. Yay. And they, they sent this in a couple weeks ago. I appreciate their steadfastness in attempting to get me their video and they, we finally have it. And so here it is. Hi, I'm Sharika. And I'm Barb. And we're going over our 2023 fair entries. All right, Sharika, and we'll begin with what are you wearing? All right, this one's called the Dagna Yoke Sweater by Kristen Drysdale. Um, I'm new to knitting, I guess maybe about maybe two years now. Um, so this pattern was really, really difficult for me, um, but I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah, she had so much fun that she ended up getting first place, <laughs> you know, and I also did one and it ended up getting second. So mine was purple and white. Um, and I, I taught her to knit just real quick. I taught her to knit a couple years ago. And so now she's exceeding me and beat it. She beat me in three categories this year. So uh, I got to pick up the, pick up the pace. <laughs> uh, the next category was, um, it was the um, knitted ensemble. Ensemble. So <laughs> here's mine. Um, this is the flax sweater, which I actually made for my 20 month old son, along with the, I forget the name of this. This is the barley hat. Um, and I ended up getting third place on this one. And I ended up doing a variation on a, I think it's called the coat sweater but I put the spiders in it and with a matching hat this yarn I bought at a thrift store and I figure the wool is about at least 20 years old and it smells that way I steam blocked it but I haven't washed it yet and our next this here is the Alvia sweater uh, which she was supposed to knit with me, but backed out. <laughs> I quit. It took me forever to uh, 
get this right. So this was made by, uh, the design was Hanny. I'm going to butcher the last name, so I'm not going to try to say it, but it's a Nordic sweater. And this is also for my son. And then this is my child's sweater. I use nice wooly wool from the Wooly Thistle and it's a navy color, but it's really washing out. Um, it's just a basic sweater. There wasn't anything special about it, except that I took second on it. Instead of first, I oh, had to get first on this one. Yes. It was hard for me, believe me. <laughs> yeah. um, the next sweater, I have another sweater. This was the Dunrobin. I was a test knitter for this. It ended up taking second and it was um, made with the Studio Donegal yarn in moss. And... Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to wearing this, and I love three-quarter sleeves, so I did alter it a little bit because I cook a lot, and I can't stand wearing sleeves that get in my food when I cook. The next is hats. Yes. So this one is the June hat. Um, they have a collection of hats each month, um, and this one just happens to be the one for June. Um, I had a bunch of leftover yarn um, that was easy for me to complete this and I got third I probably I don't know my husband probably be wearing this one <laughs> he wears all my hats um, this was a different category of hat but this was one of the fair isle that they put out and it ended up being a little big and you can't really fold up a fair isle so what I did was then I knit I took some extra yarn and knit an insert so now, cause I, it gets really windy and cold in Pennsylvania. And so I, this way you can wear the hat and it doesn't have to be folded up. Next hat. This is the, oh, Shetland hand spun wool. That's what this was. Um, and I don't remember who made this pattern, but um, it's a bunch of moss stitch and uh, what's this one called? I think there's a basket weave on basket there weave, and moss and think. garter. Yeah. So, um, I got first. And that was in the hand spun yeah. category. And I spun that wool. And, and then she took first place. Yeah. I didn't even bring mine because it did a win. <laughs> <laughs> and you have another hat. Yep. This is also, this is hand spun dye that yeah. you actually did also. You had a bunch of different colors and... I just fell in love with the colors. My husband loves purple. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, this was just a simple knit, 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 knit hat. Um, and I placed fourth. All right. And then we had a couple scarves. Um, this was yarn that I came in a Wooly Thistle Christmas pack. And I do not remember the name of it. Uh, oops. Making tracks. It was like uh, two, like a one-off yarn or something. Anyways, this is actually crocheted to look like knitting. And it was a design your own scarf. So I designed the scarf and I ended up taking second place for it. Here's another scarf. As you can see, the theme is always purple because I'm always thinking of my husband. Um, I don't remember the yarn, but all I know, it's really soft and really long. And uh, like she said, in Pennsylvania, it gets really cold. So uh, it'll come in nice and, you know, come in handy. So, yeah. Um, this is more yarn from the Wooly Thistle. It was, there used to be a matching headband that accidentally got in the washer. So it shrunk and so much that it lost all the elasticity and I had to get rid of it. It actually became a cat toy for a while. <laughs> But um, these are fingerless mitts that I knit. It's all that's left of the skein of yarn because the headband, the matching headband is gone. It was just a basic, I just made my own pattern. It's just a base, basic stitches. And then I also had a pair of gloves. This is washable wool. Um, and then uh, this is local yarn. I like that. Um, and these were my favorite socks. I thought for sure they'd get best to show on them. Nope, place second. And then the last thing was some more hand spun. Um, it was for a shawl. I don't know if you can see it. It's like black and purples. And I placed second. So that was some of our fair entries. Mm -hmm. We didn't bring all of them. These were just the most wooly wools and uh, 
probably half of my entries, the yarn came from the woolly thistle. Anything you'd like to add, Sharika? Yeah, so, you know, in, in 2024, I actually look forward to maybe doing some more difficult patterns and um, obviously getting better better at knitting and not having to lean so much on this lady because she helps me out like like nobody's business and she's super patient with me. So I want to get more dependent on reading patterns and uh, becoming a better knitter. So, yeah. Yep, and I'm I'm trying to at least do 60 entries next year instead of the 50 is my goal. Um, just because it's a nice goal. And at the end of the fair, I have really nice gifts to give at Christmas. That's, the, that's what makes it nice. You work all year, enter it in the fair. I'd like to encourage everybody to support your local fair by um, putting in your knitted entries. And that's it. That's it. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Shreka is a fairly new knitter, which is astonishing. Um, yeah. The projects were really, really delightful. Yeah. Thank you so much. If you would like to be a guest contributor, if you would like, if you have woolly thistle knits that you would like to share with. Yep. all of us yeah um, we would love we to we have a form on the website i'm sorry if you're cutting you off I, we have a form on the website that you can i just can't stop just go go um, go, go. you can great. complete and um submit your your entry and your video um if you can't find it you can email us at the info at the woolly thistle we'll yes. make sure you get that link yes we are really enjoying uh the videos that are coming in and we want to give you um a big shout out so thank yeah. you um i bumped into joe lager actually in real life I was at um, Five Sisters Farm a couple of weeks ago. She was having a little yeah. farm festival on her farm, which was really, really good. And I turned around and Joe's there. Mm -hmm. Joe's been on the show. Yeah. And it took me, it didn't take me a minute, but it, I, it took me a second to like put things together. I felt very out of context. Yeah. And I was like, oh, hello. So it was really good to see you, Joe. <laughs> All right, okay. so what's I, I will say one little tip. We love your contributions. One little tip if you're recording for us is to turn your camera sideways. Um, um, I think many of us are so used to, re used to recording vertically now for social media um, as that requires that. But um, if you're recording for the YouTube channel, if you can record sideways. Um, yeah. If you forget, we can still include it, but it looks a little better if you yeah. record it sideways. Yeah. So just a little tip. Okay. What's next? Okay. Um, what's next? Let's yeah. share a little bit of what we got at Rhinebeck and then we can go to Kelsey. Yes. Now, as a professional yarn shopper, I don't typically buy yarn yeah. at Rhinebeck, but I did buy a little bit. You did? Yes. Yeah. I think this is the first time I've seen you, like... Buy yarn? Yeah. Yeah, well, last maybe year... maybe not. I think when we went to New Hampshire Sheep and Wool, you bought a little junction. Yeah, I might buy... Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm, I do buy some, but I, I... Can I just give a shout out to um, our pals over at Junction Fiber Mill? Yeah. Uh, just worked their first Rhinebeck. And they were um, busy. We went by their booth and it was really busy and it yes. was so nice to see Penny yeah. and Amanda yeah. crushing it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, Very happy for them. Yeah. It was, it was awesome. really, really good. I saw their bags around too. Yeah. We were giving out bags as well, mm -hmm. left, right and center, which was fun. Yeah. All right. So do you want to show us what you, what you got? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so I, I bought a lot of fiber, which I didn't bring with me. Um, a lot of spinning fiber. She bought a lot of fiber. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like a lot poundage, like especially it's really floofy, right? So it fills up space. It, yes. That's my excuse. It's impressive. It, it was really impressive. So um, uh, I can certainly put in pictures if anyone wants to see. But um, the things I was most excited about, um, Kelsey was standing in line at the Salty <laughs> Bag Maker's booth. Um, so the bag maker is beautiful sister, S Y S T E R dot com. Um, and it's this cute little project bag. Mm -hmm. um, and it's got where, yes so um gnomes. it's got gnomes on it so i just couldn't it was resist. so cute you were looking at that well kelsey was showing us her bag that she was getting we're all like ooh and ah and then you turn around and you're like no <laughs> that was it money was flying and then, was... and then i literally grabbed it and i got in line behind kelsey and she's like you're getting that and i'm like well gnomes <laughs> <laughs> like that so did you yeah. not see it and then while i was in line for like 30 seconds um, I grabbed a second bag, so For hopefully, hopefully this is in the mail um, before yeah before it arrives. Otherwise, spoiler. She um, really missed you. Well, we yeah, all did. Marie. I did. I did. Yeah. yeah so my sister had to you. cancel at the last minute, so yeah. I shopped and got a few things. You did. For her. You so did. it's this really cute little bucket bag, and it has like a nice leather yeah. handle. Yeah. And yeah, I really like the cute. bright pink zip on it. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She's a pink gal too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, happily love the pinks. 
So I got this, mm -hmm. these at Woolen Folk, and actually everything I have today is from Woolen Folk. Actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. Um, because everything else was fiber that yeah. I got at. What about the, um, the other? I didn't bring them because I didn't want to spoil, in case my sister's watching this, I yeah. didn't want her to see everything. Okay. Her birthday was recently. Um, okay. So yep. I did some birthday shopping and cool. I didn't mind sneaking. So and then the only other thing I got was I finally treated myself to some woolens and nosh. <gasps> yes. Um self striping yarn. Well it's a, woolens and nosh is in Vermont and they're a sock dyer. Yeah. An indie dyer. Yeah. Um, Michelle's she, lovely. We really like Michelle. We, yeah. And she's um dying on bases other than I mean, I'm sure she does do superwash merino as well, yeah. but she'll dye on Cory Dale and Targi. Targi. This one. Yeah. So this is still super washed. It's super washed Targi. Um, and this one is the Sour Grapes colorway from her. Good name. It's really cute. Um, and it'll stripe. And then this one I really couldn't resist was the Pretty Felt Garland. Yeah. Which is totally like those little felt ball garlands. Yeah. That you would put on yeah, your yeah, 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 so. yeah. Oh, I didn't bring them today. Yeah, but uh, so. yeah. And Denise of Earth Twins Girl was at her booth as well. It was great to see Denise. Mm -hmm. Love you, Denise. Yeah. Yeah. So, so is that everything? That's, yeah, that's everything. So I have a hole in my jeans, and I was thinking, I want to do some visible mending. So I, because I didn't have any thread at home for this, and I got the sashiko uh, needle thing. Okay. And so I got that. And I got some, what is this? There's some magpie fibers. I know. Plume lace, 75% cashmere, 25% silk. And I just, I loved the feel of it and I love these colors. Yeah. And I'm probably they had just a pretty gonna, little sample there. They did. It was lovely. And I'm yeah. probably just going to pet these for a long time to come. Um, I got a lovely skein of this Scottish wool yarn from Eva, who is the owner of the Scottish Yarn Festival. She was over at Woolen Folk. It was great to see her. Mm -hmm. Ella Scott, she had the flag flying and everything. Yeah. And this is her new yarn. This is four ply and it is um, Shetland wool and Cheviot 8020. And it's really lovely. It's it really lovely. Is. And it's got a nice sort of fluff factor to it. So I got a skin of that from from Eva. Thank you. Yeah, that one, she wasn't vending on that wool. In fact, that one was a gift from her. Yes. But, yes. Um, um, yeah. but I'm very happy with it. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, and then I got Bobo Link sock yarn. Uh, this was recommended by Kelsey while we were walking around. And of course, I love the colors. And this is, let me tell you what's in here. It's 75% wool, 25% nylon, fingering weight, 410 yards. So I think this will be a really fun pair of socks. I feel like the yeah. sock knitting is coming yeah. back a little and bit Bobo for Link me. is located in Vermont. Yes, and she works with uh, local farmers. Mm -hmm. And um, she's doing some really interesting work. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And she'll do breed specific uh, skeins. Although this one just says wool, but yeah, she'll do breed specific. Uh, lovely, lovely lady. Yeah, really she had some lovely skeins of like coupoir. Yeah. Um, I was petting that one for a while while you guys were yeah, chatting. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, I'm looking forward to knitting these up, mm -hmm. too. I think socks are going to be back on the needles. Yeah. And then the last thing I got was a wee bit of weaving. Um, I don't even know what booth I got this at now. Yeah, and I don't think it has a tag on it. No, I don't think it, it does. it's really beautiful. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, it's a scarf, or I could put it yeah. on the table or something. But I just, I appreciate weaving. What a fun weaving. scarf. It is. It's beautiful colors. And I don't knit scarves, generally. Right. So, yeah. so I, I just, I liked it. I like the colorfulness of it. I like the particular colors. And mm -hmm. she was very nice. Uh, she was in one of the booths. I don't know what you call that area. I don't remember. But, you was know, she in a barn? She or? was in a barn booth. Okay. Yeah. So in the barns. Um, so yes, that's what I got. I don't know that I got anything else. I think that's everything. Yeah, no, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I, <clears throat> I know that Kelsey and Emma were shopping. Oh. Um, and Caitlin and her mom too, so we might see some of that yeah. coming up. Shall we go to? Yeah, let's go to, um, I have Kelsey up first. All right. Um, Kelsey recorded this before Rhinebeck, so you won't see any of her Rhinebeck haul in it, but I believe she's talking a little bit about yarn storage. Oh good, we all need that. Which is really fun, yes. All right. All right, we'll see you on the other side. Hi, it's Kelsey. I'm coming to talk to you a little bit about yarn storage. Um, so first of all, there's a few different types of knitters that I've run into over the years. Um, one type of knitter is the knitter who finds a pattern that they like or makes up their own project, asks or figures out what kind of yarn that they need for that project, picks out their colors, matches it to the pattern, knits the pattern, and finishes the project, and then moves on. 
Um, the other type of knitter <laughs> is more like me. Um, I have yarn. I have yarn um, stored in my home that I don't have any particular projects in mind for. I've developed, it's not a lot, it's not a lot, a lot of yarn. It's just I do have some selection <laughs> in my possession at any given time. Um, this has come about because there will often be yarns that are only available for a limited amount of time, yarns that have come back in stock in a certain color that are hard to get. If I am visiting another place and I come across a yarn that I really like or I'm going to a festival and there's a yarn from a farm that I really like, um, there's a lot of reasons why I end up with yarn that I don't have immediate plans for. Um, so when you do that, like I do, uh, you have some yarn to store and you have some yarn to figure out what to do with between when you buy it and when you use it. Um, you're not in sort of the position of turning over your stock necessarily like a yarn store would. Um, so it's possible that your yarn will be sticking around in your home or wherever it is for longer than it would be in a store. So you're, you're planning for a little bit of a longer shelf life probably. Um, that said, people who are in the first category, all power to you. I'm happy to hear from you. I'm happy to answer your emails and help you with your color choices. Um, you will also end up with leftovers. So you'll end up knitting your project and having a skein or a ball or half a skein or something left over um, that you do have to store and you have to wait and see what you're going to do with the rest of it. There, It is the very rare crafter that I've run into that knits whatever they want and then gets rid of it. Um, they de definitely do exist. You know, you knit something that's supposed to be four skeins in your project, you get to three and three quarters and you have a quarter skein left and they give it away or they donate it or it's just, it's gone, it's out. So that's that's like the last category of people, but I imagine those people are, are on the rarer side. I've only met a few. Um, but generally somebody who knits or spins or crochets or weaves or whatever has some yarn around. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about how I store my yarn and some, some tick, tips and tricks that I've heard from other people about how um, they store their yarn. So the first thing that I wanted to, very first thing to start with is how yarn appears when you buy it. There's three kind of main forms that yarn will come in when you buy it. Um, one I consider sort of a more industrial situation, like setup. One is a hand knitting setup, but is not knittable in its form. And the third is knittable in its, you know, by its bought form in the form that you buy it in. Um, so the, f the ones that are knittable in the form you buy them are generally these guys. Um, they're usually 50 or 100 grams. This happens to be Rama Gamel Seri. And you can knit directly from this. You can do that two ways. You can pull from the middle or you can find the outside and unwind it. You'd have to take off the ball band to do the outside, but you can do it either way. Um, but you don't have to do anything else to this to knit from it. These guys I store just, just as they are. Um, and they can stay like this indefinitely. They're not under any kind of tension, um, but then you can just sort of knit from them. So that's the first one. That's fairly simple. It's the simplest one. There's also ones that are donut shaped. So it's it's actually like if you took this guy, this is gonna be weird, but if you popped it, if you flattened it, it's just the same, it's the same sort of setup. It's just wider than it is tall. And this is taller than it is wide. And I gotta put my ball band back on. Boop. Um, the second is cones. Cones I consider to be a more industrial put up. They are preferred by um, many weavers and also by many um, machine knitters because they are just kind of, they'll just come off. Also people who use circular sock machines, um, you can often go straight from one of these because it just pulls off the top. Where'd that string go? Here. It'll just pull straight up as you're knitting. So if you're hand knitting or doing whatever, you can just plonk it on the floor. You also don't have to do anything with this. So storage can store, I store like that. That's where that guy just lives. Um, this lives up above, so I'm not gonna put it back. The last one though is the trickier one, this guy. These are often called skeins. They're also called hanks of yarn. Um, if I were to undo this, it comes out into a big, big loop. 
and that's the loop um, that comes off of how they wind these these off of the mechanism, whatever, whichever spinning mechanism they're using. Um, they tend to be anywhere from a few feet to a few yards in diameter once you pull them all apart. Um, but the trick is you can't knit from this. You can try, it will be a huge mess. Um, so you have to wind this into something called, a, well, into a ball or a cake before you knit with it. Um, let me see. <laughs> So this is a leftover bit, but you can still sort of see the structure. This was a cake. So this was wound from something that was this. This is actually biche bouche. Um, so it was wound from something that looks like this into something that is sort of hat shaped or pill shaped around and around and around like this. Um, my point of all of this is I store my yarn like this, not like this. And I'll tell you why. When you're winding your yarn from this, to this on a, um, usually on a swift and ball winder or from a, and a swift and, and in hand wound into a ball or from two chairs and hand wound into a ball. Um, it puts the yarn under a bit of tension this way, sort of lengthwise tension. This is extremely relaxed. You can see it's just kind of whatever. This is even in the size is under a little bit of tension pulling on the strands. And what we, what we love about wool is that it's got some waviness to it. Um, longer wools don't have as much waviness, like <laughs> this is Exmoor Sock. It's made with some long wools. It's worsted spun, so it's definitely floppier. Um, so it has less waviness, but it still does have waviness. You never really want your yarn to be completely taut because eventually over time, if it sits there, it will straighten out all of the crimp. That's called, the waviness is called the crimp in your yarn. And you won't have any more of that sort of squishy, bouncy, oh, I should have said, this is Gray Sheep Company. Um, you won't anymore have that squishy bounciness that we like in wool. So if you wind something like into a cake like this too soon before you're going to use it, it's going to sit under tension for longer. Um, so when I, when people go to a local yarn store and Get, have them wind a cake in the store. Completely understandable because you know you may not have um, a Swift at home and so it's a little more difficult to wind. But unless you're really use, planning to use the yarn soon, um, and by soon I mean in a few weeks, like it does, it's not like that minute, it's not that urgent. Um, but if you're like just buying it to put in your stash, I really wouldn't recommend winding it because um, you're putting it under tension. The second thing about winding your yarn is that when you wind it once, especially with a hand cranked um, winder off of a Swift, it's put under some tension and it will end up being really dense. Um, if it ends up being really dense, like it shouldn't feel dense when you pull it off, you can actually wind it a second time by putting it in a yarn bolt or any kind of large bowl and winding it from the cake to another cake. That removes some of the friction in the Swift or from your friend who's holding their, holding it or whatever and makes that cake puffier and lighter and less pulled. So that will help make your cake less damaging to your yarn. Um, I've seen literally balls of yarn that, this, is an, this one's an exaggeration, but if it was this big as a first wound cake, it could be that big. You know, it might be a third bigger as a second wound cake. So if you are planning to leave it for a little bit, I would, would, could, would recommend winding it twice. Um, it's kind of a bummer, especially with fingering weight yarn because it takes so long. Um, but you'll really notice a difference in how relaxed the yarn is while you're knitting with it, especially if it's going to sit for a little while. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit after talking about winding that about how I store, how I organize my yarn. Um, I've done it a few different ways. Um, the way I've currently organized it for the most part is by um, weight. So from bottom to top in this, in this one over here, it's heaviest to sort of medium. And then there's another one you can't see that's a similar size to this that is sort of DK to fingering. So this is like bulky to DK and there's another one that's DK to fingering. Then I have one offs around that are like a little bit of sock yarn and a little bit of farm yarn and cones and things. So they're in different places. Um, I find that organizing by weight will help you really see what you can use together 
together. So, you know, if you're going to knit a hat and you're going to knit it in worsted weight, um, it doesn't help you if you've gathered all your reds together because, you know, your red fingering and your red worsted are next to each other, but your red worsted and your, you know, icy blue worsted might be somewhere else and you can't like visualize it as easily. That's just how my brain, my brain works. I've done it the other way. I've done it by color. Um, I've done it by yarn brand. I've done it um, all kinds of ways. But this is what has, I have found that's worked for me. So if you're finding that it's, it's, you're having a little bit of trouble um, visualizing your projects or deciding what you want to knit or mixing different brands of yarn together, um, I'd recommend trying to organize by weight and see what combinations come together. So that brings me to my next little point about this is I will often take all of my yarn off of the shelf, spread it all out on the floor and reorganize it. Whether I organize it into the same categories or completely different ones, it's not always <laughs> what happens. Um, but I do this for a few reasons. Number one, it airs out the yarn. Um, pests like moths or other bugs really don't like sunlight or fresh air, which sounds gross, but it's because they are gross. Um, but if you're leaving yarn that is accessible to bugs, like my stuff actually is for the most part, um, but in a dark sort of low circulation place, you're, you're really asking for um, potential issues. So I will take everything out, I will lay it down on the floor of this room, which is not very big, but I just I do what I can. And I um, reorganize things, I organize by, by brand or, you know, farm yarns over here and British yarns over here by sort of country. <laughs> um, I'll do it by color or by weight of yarn reorganize everything and then decide what makes sense to my brain in that moment, which might be different than it did six months ago. Uh, and I put it all back. And it's sort of that dual purpose of, well, actually there's three purposes. One, airing out the yarn. Two, reorganizing the yarn, seeing if a different thing works better. And three, reorienting you to the yarn that you have. Um, there might be a skein that you forgot about, or there might be a skein that you've never seen next to another skein and go, oh, those are fantastic together. Or you've been thinking about a yoked sweater forever and you um, forgot that you had a certain shade of orange or, or whatever it is. It's a nice opportunity to sort of re-greet your yarn <laughs> and re-fall re in love with what you fell in love with when you bought it. Um, I think it yields some appreciation and, and gratitude towards the yarn that you do have. Um, and I think it's just a nice thing to be doing. Um, relatedly, so now I'm going to segue just a little bit. There are downsides to storing your yarn like I primarily do in these couple of cubbies. One is, as I said, it is accessible to some moths and other creatures. I have a little bit of yarn stored in boxes like this. These are just sort of plastic tote boxes. Um, generally, I'll put like a sweater quantity. That one was empty, so I could pick it up. Um, I'll put a sweater quantity or two in a box like that because I don't need, you know, eight skeins or something sitting there to know where what it is or where it is. Um, I only own a couple sweater quantities at a time. Um, so that's a nice way to store sweater quantities that you don't need to be thinking so much about, that you just know I have these couple. Um, and it keeps them more sealed from things like pests. The other downside to storing in cubbies like this is sunlight. If you set up your situation, a shelf situation or a cabinet or whatever in direct sunlight, you can have some fading. Um, that is more likely to be the case with things that are naturally dyed um, than things that are um, acid dyed. So most commercial yarns and a lot of hand dyed yarns are acid dyed. You'll know if something is naturally dyed because it will say naturally dyed. Um, and it is more common in hand dyed than commercial. So if you've got something like this that is commercial yarn um, that is dyed in a big sort of uh, a larger industrial commercial kind of process, it'll be the likely to be the least likely affected by direct sunlight. Um, I've actually had skeins of naturally dyed yarn, actually nothing from the woolly thistle, just a different skein I had that I was storing in one of these cubbies. And when I went to pull it out, the front, you know, bit of it, like that much that I'm showing with my finger, um, had faded by probably three shades. <laughs> so then I had this weird splotch that was a different shade than the rest of the yarn. So that was a bummer. Um, so that's just the other thing to know when you're storing sort of in open air is if you're hitting it with direct sunlight all the time, you could have some, some damage to the pigments of the yarn. So those are my big 
things about yarn storage and organization. Um, I did want to share one little project, and I know I've been talking for a while, but it's fun. This is the West Yorkshire Spinners, um, one of their Christmas holiday colorways. This one is called Candy Cane. It was the color from a few years ago. I don't, at least three, at least three years ago. Um, and I am knitting socks for my family. So I've already knit a pair of socks for my one-year-old. These are the socks for my, um, well, this is half of a sock for my four-year-old. And um, I will be able to get the one-year-old socks, the four-year-old socks, and possibly a pair of shorties for myself out of 100 gram um, ball skein. So what I'm doing for theirs is I am knitting the flax pattern in the fingering weight that's by Tin Can Knits. Um, so it's got a garter panel on the front and a heel flap and gusset heel, not doing contrast heels or toes, um, but just knitting however long I feel like for the leg, doing the heel and then knitting their foot size for the foot. Um, but then what I'm going to do for my, for mine to maximize what I have in yarn, um, well, I have to decide if I'm going to buy another skein or not, but that's a different question. What I was planning to do is weigh whatever I have left and then split it in half and then start toe up socks. So then if I have ankle socks, that's fine. If I go a little higher, that's fine because I'll only knit sort of half of what I have left. So that's my, that's my big project for now. I've already done the tiniest socks and I'm thinking maybe I did it in the wrong order because the tiny ones were like a day and a half and, and now the bigger one, the four-year-olds are taking longer and then mine are gonna take even longer and then we'll see if I get to my partners and how long that's gonna take. Um, but yeah, it's a fantastic yarn. I've knit other socks out of the same yarn in a solid color um, that I was doing some more texture but I really like this very classic candy cane stripe of this yarn. Um, it is, uh, I'm on um, one point, US 1.5 needles and I had US 1s for the ribbing. So anyway, that's all I have today. I hope there was something helpful in what I shared about um, how to store your yarn and not to wind it till you need it and to think about how you wanna store it for accessibility versus um, some, some of the rare but possible downsides. Um, and how to organize your yarn for your best creativity. I hope you're having a great time knitting this fall and I will talk to you later. Bye. Thank you, Kelsey. That was awesome. And I haven't watched it yet, so I'll be watching it with everyone else. <laughs> me too. Me too, me too. Yes. And uh, yeah, so now I think we're going to talk about blankets, which is the big thing of yes. this episode. Yeah. So um, our studio Donegal blankets are um, machine assisted woven. So they're hand woven. Um, it, at Studio Donegal in Ireland. County Donegal, yes, yeah. yes. Um, and they are absolutely wonderful. They are custom made for us. We've been waiting months and months and we are very, very, very excited. Yes, so we do this, but maybe once a year, maybe twice if we're lucky, right. but um, yeah, so these are beautiful. They're a good size. Um, on my king size bed, it sort of fills the top. It doesn't hang down, but it fills right. the top. Um, so on a smaller bed, it would cover more. And they're they're a really good weight. They've got a really nice hefty weight to yeah. them. Um, and they're very woolly. They are 100% wool. 100% wool. Beautiful fringes. Gorgeous colors. You can get some that are bright. You can get some that are more neutral. So we'll yeah. show you all the different ones. Do we have the label? Handy? Yes, so the label is... It's on one on of the corners. Not here. Well, maybe it's tucked in. It's, oh, there it is. There it is. And Tripoli. Yep, this one is the Tripoli one. Uh, just to show you that it comes with this lovely sewn on yes. label. So this is Tripoli, which is sort of um, very colorful. It says violet is the color of it. So you've got, but you've got all the colors of the rainbow yeah. in here. Very it's lovely and warm. Very lovely. Yes. Uh, this one, I like. It's tra very traditional mm -hmm. feeling. And this one is called... Plaid, 465. Shamrock. Shamrock plaid. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so it's blue and greens with a gray and just lovely. Yeah, yeah. really nice. Really wonderful. Great for a picnic in the mm -hmm. summertime or, you know, snuggling up with. Yes. This one is fuchsia and it's the undulating twill. I really like this one. Mm -hmm. 
hard to get I mean, they're all gorgeous it's hard to get a good photo the, of some of these yeah this is more about the design in the weaving so there's stuff going on with feet pedals and things with yeah. this i like this one it's more neutral i have this one at home this one is pastel and it's the sampler mm -hmm. which is really really nice right. it's really neutral yeah really nice and it has like a bit of a bit of green yeah it's got a greenish hue which is yeah. lovely it's Wonderful. blue and gray and brown and these are we've got plenty of each color correct yes so you can choose your favorites <laughs> yes uh we've had people in the past um purchase uh for christmas presents and things like that so this is a good time for that for yeah. sure um this will be the only top up before christmas like yeah. this is this is it this is the petrol undulating twill so like that bright pink one it's all about the stitch design yeah really nice really beautiful yes uh oh this is new to me yeah so we do have a few new colorways this time this one here is checked stripe multi-checked so oh and it does say these are 72 inches by 58 all the specs are in the product listing mm -hmm. um okay so this is a checked stripe multi-check and it's really nice it's sort of a darker rainbow if you like yeah the different colors going through more more of a brackeny brown yeah orange but blue and yeah. ah, the back has really like a nice swath of yeah blue yes it does this one is a nice one this has got browns and grays i think this one was pretty popular last time i agree all right here it is let's see this is called the donegal plaid in peat mm -hmm. so that nice peaty brown with gray and beige as well go anywhere really yes wonderful. lovely um yeah so i don't know how many that is we've got through about <laughs> half of them yeah <laughs> and we still get these and we got more to show you yeah so why don't you come back after we visit with emma emma whose seg segment we haven't seen either but i think it is from ring yeah yeah she just she like us she is recording today and um she just got us that video yeah so, so let's enjoy. go enjoy yes hi um emma here from baltimore i'm here about once a month talking about fun yarny stuff um and today i'm going to be talking about rhinebeck sweaters <laughs> so it was so nice to see so many of you at rhinebeck last weekend um i i'm recording this obviously in advance of friday and i just got home yesterday from rhinebeck um and the, like this little team and i had the best time ever so thank you so much for all coming out saying hi buying our rambler yarn <laughs> um coming to the podcast for meetup um supporting us um we're so grateful for you so we couldn't do it without you. <laughs> um, so um, this is my Rhinebeck sweater from this year. Um, and I wanted to talk about my like process a little bit uh, in making it, but also like what like Rhinebeck sweaters mean to me. So um, last year I made a sweater that, a Fair Isle sweater for Rhinebeck that I modified from the Vintage Shetland Project. And it was modified from the Hilda jacket and I made it into just like a round neck pullover. And this is what I wore last year to Rhinebeck. It took me a year to make it because it kept going in time out. So the sleeve was too big and then I had to take it out and knit the first sleeve again, all sorts of stuff. Um, so it took me the whole year to do it. And I got most of the bands from the Vintage Shetland Project, but I did the shaping entirely myself. Um, all of the counts, all of the steaking, all of the, like the neckline, it was fully free-handed. Um, and then I, um, I chose the colors. The Vintage Shetland Project colors were all the natural colors. Um, I wanted a pop of red, so I did that. Um, so very inspired by the, the actual Fair Isle pattern bands and the color ways, sort of. Um, but I made, a, made it into a completely new shape. And I was really excited about that. I wear this all the time. It's kind of like a sweatshirt. Um, so this was my, this was my Rhinebeck kind of magnum opus last year. And I decided to wear my Cetestal cardigan this year, which I also freehanded. This um, one, I used the book Traditional Scandinavian Knitting by Sheila McGregor to come up with the, well, I didn't come up with these charts. I got the charts from there, came up with the, you know, how I was gonna order them and when I was gonna switch the background colors and foreground colors um, and all that, um, you know, what I was gonna do here. And it is, just an open jacket, it has the patterning on the hem as well. Um, it does have buttons, I just haven't sewn them on yet. I was gonna do it for Rhinebeck and then I didn't. Um, but they're sitting in my notions bag. 
Um, the only thing I'm not super happy with about with this one is the neck. I think it's too square. So I'm working on making a more rounded neckline um, for, or I'm gonna work on that next time I knit a, something with a crew neck, whether it's a cardigan or a pullover. Um, these were knit, by the way, this was knit in Jameson and Smith, two ply jumper weight from a cone in color 81, which is the dark charcoal. And then the white, or it's like a light gray color. It is Rama Lamelgarn in colorway 12. And they play really well together. Um, people kept asking me about that at Rhinebeck. Does it, you know, we were saying, oh, I didn't know that those worked well together. They really do. Jameson goes really well with Rama. Well, you could knit it with Rama Fennelgarn too, but Fennelgarn is a little thicker. Lamelgarn is more the weight in terms of yardage and grist. Grist is yards per pound. It's a term that sometimes spinners use. Um, there's like the similar, similar yardage basically per weight in, um, or by weight in Jameson and Smith two ply and um, Rommel Lamelgarn. So <laughs> yeah, that, uh, this one was knitted in Jameson and Smith Supreme jumper weight for the natural colors and then two ply jumper weight for the red. And then the, so the Jameson and Smith Supreme is a little bit thicker than the, than the, than the dyed ones but it didn't really matter. As long as I was careful with my color dominance and I made sure that the red was always the foreground color, like I was carrying it closer to the to the work, um, then um, it was fine. And if you don't know anything about color dominance and you're really confused and you wanna know what color dominance is, you should check out our Intro to Color Work course <laughs> because I talk about it a bunch um, and it's really useful to know. I didn't know for a long time what color dominance was when I started um, color work knitting and I have like, it means basically what which color kind of jumps out of the fabric more. And so it can really change the look of a thing, like a, a piece, if you switch your color dominance back and forth. Um, and I actually have a pair of mittens, um, which I don't have on me, but maybe next time I'll show them. And they're really complicated, like super fine gauge color work. And they look like completely different mittens because even though they have the same pattern, the color dominance changed. Like I changed the, I didn't realize what I was doing. And one of them, the background color is dominant. And one of them, the foreground color is dominant. So um, they look, they like almost look like different mittens, which is kind of funny. Um, but I learned my lesson eventually. So I want to actually talk now about next year's Rhinebeck sweater because this one took me a whole year. And it was like 2021, 2022. So this one took me six months. I started this one in March and I finished it in September. So almost six months. Yeah, six months, March to September, six months. So I'm thinking ahead this time because it might take another year. <laughs> so I've had this one kind of percolating in my head for a while, but I've decided that like, this is clearly the tradition is to like design a, a fair aisle piece, like a, a full, like this is what I do it for. This is what kind of gets me through the, the full fair aisle piece, like you know, get through the sleeves, get through all the finishing, oh, except the buttons clearly. Um, is that like Rhinebeck, I want to wear it to Rhinebeck, so I better have it done. So that's kind of helpful to have like a kind of artificial deadline there. Like if I don't finish it, who cares? But you know, it's nice to kind of have the, okay, this is what we're doing it for. So that, you know, you have the, the kind of, um, you know, the, the drive to, to get it done. So um, especially if you're like me and you take a lot of breaks and you like put it in timeout for a couple months and then you come back to it for a couple weeks and then it goes in timeout for another couple months. Um, so I'm trying to do that less just because I find that I have less knitting time the older I get the more like things I have to do It's like I should focus on one thing at a time because otherwise nothing will get done um, But I'm gonna stop rambling and show you some of the things that I have here So I've always wanted to have like a like a fair isle kind of monochrome blue and white like Just blues with white. So I've got a Jameson and Smith cone of one. I think it was one a one, just shade one. This must just be the, the the bright white shade one. Have not used a whole lot. I've used it as like the background color for hats and stuff, but I haven't really used it much. So it's basically a full 500 gram cone almost. If you want cones, the Woolly Thistle has them. Um, I also have a cone of 203, which is light gray. Um, there are a few gray shades. There's 203, which is the lightest one. Then there's 27. I have a cone of 27 downstairs, but it's um, like a half cone because I knitted a, the body of my porty pullover in it. And then 54 is the like darker gray. And then obviously charcoal is a very dark, the 81 charcoal is a very dark gray um, because there's some heathering in it. But this is the next, next one from white. 
um, 203. So these two, I'll keep them here so you can see them. And then I have a variety of blues. So this, I have some Biche Bouche in a very light blue. It's literally called very light blue. You can see that. Um, this um, is like kind of like another like backgroundy color maybe, like to kind of go from the white to the gray maybe. Um, and I have also here 1280 mix. Jameson Smith 2 ply. I may just do one of these. Like this one kind of goes more because there's more heathering in it of different kind of colors and it kind of goes a little bit more seamlessly maybe. Although it might be too close to the gray. I don't know. Maybe both. Who knows? I also have like Jameson's of Shetland and Blue Danube. This could be, this is sort of similar to this. It's sort of like, you know, these are like brighter blues. Um, so, you know, something like this. Could be a, you know, like this. I don't know. This is just like light colors. I might just use blue and gray. Um, Jameson's of Shetland eggshell is also a really nice color. Um, like light blue, I've used that before as like a kind of within fades of like white to gray. That's a good one. Um, but yeah, so here's, I will probably not be using all of these. I may be using more than these, but here is a bag full of blue yarns that I will perhaps use for this sweater. And I can't decide how bright I want it to be. Okay, what do I have here? So this is not marked. <laughs> I'm gonna guess. <laughs> so I'm leaning towards a kind of like grayer set of blues. Um, not like the really bright ones, maybe with like one or two brighter blues to kind of like pop, pop it a little bit instead of using like a, a pink or a, you know, like green or something like I usually use to just kind of tie it together, just use a blue, like a brighter blue. So I've got lots of yarns here. Um, I have some Rama Fennel Garn that I might use. Again, it's a little thicker than jump, Jumper Weight, but like I'm not super fussed. If it's in color work, it's probably fine. These are slightly different, even though they look the same. This one's 4123 and this one's 4124. <laughs> so something like, you know, one of these maybe. I'll put the other one away. Um, this one's also, these. So these three like are all really similar and these are three different companies. So this one's Rama, this is JNS 2 ply in FC 47 and this is Jameson's of Shetland and I think this colorway is Pacific. No, maybe it's Atlantic. I think Pacific has more heathering. Something I should know, but the ball band is gone. Um, so like one of these, let's just hold the Jameson's for now. Um, maybe like this one, this is Fjord. Um, I have this, which is FC37, kind of a periwinkle. This is, hmm, this is two ply jumper weight, and I'm holding these so I can't use both hands here. This is colorway FC15 mix. I'm gonna hold them back here because I think the color lighting is better. Um, ooh, hello. Ah, I'm losing it. Um, maybe like if I wanted a really dark one, this is a little purpler, but this is Shetland Spindrift and Gentian. My brother got me gentian because he he once dyed a leather jacket with a gentian dye, and he thought that was funny. He knew what that was, and so that's the colorway he picked for me. Um, and then this, like, this is my bright one. This is number 16. So, like, this could be a palette. It's kind of fun, you know, fade it. However, makes the most sense. Um, maybe some darker ones, maybe make it a little more gray, go towards like the Lomond and Highland Mist colors of Shetland Spindrift. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. We're gonna find out. Um, but I would like to use like a lot of colors and just like kind of use like one ball of each. That would be like kind of nice, you know, <laughs> not use like a bunch of balls of one color because I have a lot of singles and doubles and not a lot of like, I have four of that. Um, I do kind of have like many multiples in reds and pinks, but I don't in the blues. I just have a lot of different blues. So that would be kind of fun. You know, maybe grab one, grab this guy too. So there's a little bit more variety in the darker colors. But yeah, I'm thinking of doing this. So my, this is going to be a pullover. It's going to be a V-neck pullover. Um, not super fitted, but maybe a little bit more fitted than Hilda, which is quite um, big. Um, one of the reasons Hilda's a little bigger though is because the gauge is a little thicker because I use Shetland Supreme jumper weight instead of um, just two ply, which again is a little thinner. So yeah, this is my like next year Rhinebeck. That'd be fun kind of situation. Um, 
again, my pl I'm still in the planning stages right now, but I'll probably start knitting this at some point in the next couple months. So hopefully you'll get to see my progress. Um, if I do it, you'll see my progress. <laughs> um, but right now, yeah, I'm working on finishing up some whips um, and just kind of like getting them out the door. Um, if they're for other people or just, you know, when I say out the door, I mean like upstairs into my sweater collection and not on the needles. <laughs> um, like I finished a cardigan for my dad this week, so that's gonna go to him. Um, I'm working on um, a big cardigan for myself. It's um, like a big hoodie, kind of cabled green cardigan that is like maybe almost half done now, working on it. Um, and that's kind of a big thing. And then I'm gonna make be making a Gansey or Guernsey or Jersey, however you wanna say it. Um, for one of my teachers from like childhood, he's just retiring now, um, my, mu my music teacher um, from when I was a kid and he is very noteworthy um, and he really wanted a like fisherman's Gansey and like proper Cornish, you know, frangy penny wool, which isn't actually Cornish, it's spun in Yorkshire, <laughs> but the company is based in Cornwall. So, um, so that yarn is ready to go and I'm gonna cast that on pretty soon um, using some fun Guernsey design books. Um, but yeah, lots of things coming down the pipe, pipe, pipeline coming down the pike. What do you say? A pike, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm kind of right now focusing on like a little bit of recovery from Rhinebeck, but like also using the adrenaline and the like fun I had to kind of propel this new sweater project in all these blues. So this might be one of those situations where I just kind of sit with these blues like out in my knitting space, like look, you know, so that I can see them and let them kind of talk to me. Um, again, I'll probably do bands, like more like this, like bands. I'm thinking of doing vertical bands, but I'm not sure. That could be fun. Um, vertical bands, but I'm not sure yet um, how it's going to work. I have lots of Fair Isle design books with just like charts. So I tend to just use those, but maybe this one will be like bigger, like a bigger one and then a smaller one and like a much bigger one and then a smaller one. I'm not sure how the colors are going to go yet. Maybe I'll do like lighter colors and darker, you know, like the lighter foreground colors and then the darker foreground colors and the smaller motifs or something. I don't know. I'll have to do some swatching and find out. Maybe you will see a swatch. Maybe I'll make like a headband or something or a hat. I like to make hats because they're so functional. Um, like you can just give it to somebody and it's like really beautiful Shetland hat. And people are always like, wow, this is amazing. And it's like, well, that's technically just my swatch. <laughs> I'm really just seeing how the colors work together so I can make something bigger. <laughs> um, but we'll see. Yeah. So this is going to be a v-neck v-neck pullover for next Rhinebeck and I'm excited about it so I hope that you all had a wonderful weekend um at Rhinebeck if you were there and you shopped with us and many other people online if you weren't there um and we hope to see you again next year um and we look forward to seeing you virtually all year um so thanks so much for tuning in see you next time Thank you, Emma. It was really fun hanging out with you this weekend. Mm -hmm. That girl has energy. Yes. Right. So moving on to the next blanket. Yes. This one is... I believe this one's Valentine. Oh, I bet you're right. Valentine. Yeah, Valentine. Yeah. And it's got reds, pinks, or fuchsia, really, yeah, and if we hold blue. It this way. There we go. And we don't block you completely. That's all right. Here. Oh, this is a nice yes. one, too. All right, um, hmm. Tripoli Citrus Blush. Yes, this one was super popular last time. And I can see why. Yes, look at that, it's so pretty. Yeah, so it's citrusy, but it's also pastel -y. It's yeah. not kapow bright, but it's it definitely has lots of color. Yeah, if you wanna see more photos too, like full-size photos, you can go to the website. Mm -hmm. Go to the shop and you'll find them there. This is... Mediterranean teal and this is another one that has lots of color but a, but bigger squares just yes. some stripes so pretty different color on the other side but more there you go but bluey purple really mm -hmm. lovely so that's a Tripoli or Mediterranean I think that was Mediterranean this one's very blue mm -hmm. for all you blue People that love blue. I got it. This one is Into the Wild Seascape. Mm -hmm. Lovely, isn't it? Mm -hmm. These feel so good. They really do. Yeah. They're, they've got a nice smoothness to them, but very woolly at the same time. Oh, yes. you got that one too? I've got this one too. This one is Mediterranean Sea. All right. So, so some greens some in this one. In yeah. Mm -hmm. Just lovely. They do. Lovely, lovely. And then behind us, uh, this one here. 
is Tripoli Citrus Rainbow. Didn't we do that? Yes, we must have So we did this one already. Okay. Oh. Yeah, so that's Citrus Rainbow with another view. Yep. And you have... And then this one here is uh, the Woolly Thistles on Colorway. They did this for us, yes. which was just wonderful. So you've got the greens and the purples. Yeah. Um, so it is the, it's their triple E pattern, mm -hmm. um, but in the thistle color way. Yeah. So we have um, several of these, not a huge amount. So if yeah. you're interested in this, jump in sooner than later. But uh, we think we, we're delighted with it. Aren't Absolutely we? stunning. Yeah. yeah. So we have tons of these. Uh, well, not tons, but <laughs> quite a lot yeah. uh, because we know these are popular uh, the last couple of times we've had them. <clears throat> so hopefully... Um, you will get the one you want or the couple you want. Uh, these do make great gifts. They really, really do. They really do. So, yeah. And they are all here. So they will ship. Um, there, there's no waiting. It's right. not a pre-order. So they're here and they will ship um, directly. So if you want them in time for gift giving season, now's the time to grab it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's all we have to show you this time. Yeah. The the big thing is blankets. Yeah. Blankets. They're They're yeah. on sale today at midday. <clears throat> be there and um, you should have your email with your um with your info on it yeah. uh, if you're not on our email list you definitely want to join so that you do get um all the information about what's coming to the shop we have a lot of stuff yeah. coming in and uh going yeah. out and there are a lot of great new things in the shop there are some new sweater kits mm -hmm. there are other things but there's only so much that we can <laughs> possibly yes. squeeze into an episode yes um so much goodness so we'll show you some of that stuff next time but yep. um yeah i want to just highlight yeah it's really special and also this blankets. is kind of an extra episode too um mm -hmm. because we had gudrun oh. and mary jane last week so we're just sort of popping in here to keep us on track yeah. and we love an extra visit with you anyway mm -hmm. <clears throat> so yes um 12 o'clock today eastern you can get your blankets and what else maggie so a couple sort of finishing things um we have one more winner Oh, let's do um, that. Our second winner for today is at Leslie M. Bailey. And Leslie says, yes, <laughs> I finished my fourth buggy floor last night. And even though I have a sweater, shawl, and socks going, I cast on another pair of socks today. Good job. Thanks for a great shop cast. It was funny because I saw the blanket move in mine. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> that one. Oh wow. Um anyway, sorry. Um thanks for a great shop cast. Happy to hear about Rachel's visit home. My daughter eagerly awaits from Butterscotch shearing. Oh, Butterscotch's yes. shearing. Yes. Um so Leslie and Bailey, if you can email us at info at the woolly thistle, put prize runner in all caps, we will get you your twenty five dollar gift. Congratulations. Card. Yes and if you want to be in the running like before all you need to do is leave us a comment below. Tell us what you like about the shop cast or tell us what you'd like us to sell or just say hello. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And uh, you two can be in the running for a randomly picked uh, gift card to the Woolly Thistle. Yes. Yes. So well done. Congratulations, Leslie. And um, we're going to go out with some yoga. Yeah. Knitting yoga with Kim. Kim is uh, sharing a practice to open your shoulders. Today. Oh, that, that's perfect. I know. They're carrying Look, all I'm, these bags around. Yes. <laughs> yes so. so yeah. Well, listen, again, if we met you at uh, Rhinebeck, thank you so much for saying hello. We really enjoyed meeting you. It was a lot of fun. It really was a lot of fun. It and really was. yeah, yeah, it was the best. So thank you for making it such a great great time um i am going to go to bed early tonight and try and get back on my schedule so i think all that's left to say maggie is if you go out take your knitting bye hi woolly thistlers it's kim here back for another installment of yoga for knitters you can find me on my website turninggroundyoga.com where i teach online classes or you can find me on YouTube, Instagram, or Patreon, where I have subscription programs for yoga, meditation, and recipes. Anyway, all the business aside, welcome back. It is fall here. I was out for a beautiful, crunchy, colorful fall walk yesterday and found one of these lovely fellows. I think the technical term for what you see at the top of a thistle in the fall is thistle down, but I immediately thought that that looked like quite a woolly thistle. Anyway, today's class is all about the shoulders. Our shoulders can get tight and sore for a variety of reasons. 
It is one of the most mobile joints in our bodies. It's the most one of the most complicated joints, and it is the one that probably benefits the most from a little bit of love, care, and attention. When our shoulders are happy, we are better knitters. So without further ado, let's get started. For this short shoulder practice, I try saying that five times fast, you will need a strap. And if it feels good for you, something to elevate your hips. We are gonna sit down for part of a practice. So um, if that doesn't feel good for you, you can do it standing up or you can do it from a chair. But I'm gonna do it sitting. So we're starting in easy pose. That's crisscross applesauce or, um, you know, like you would in kindergarten or you can, if it feels good, just have both legs alongside each other in a parallel position. Wiggle around. Get comfy, it's first thing in the morning for me, so everything's a little stiff and achy. <sighs> and we're gonna fix that too. Right, so we're in a nice tall seat. Drop both hands to your sides. Inhale the left arm up. And then exhale over to the right. So already we're getting a nice stretch through the side body, but we want to open up our shoulder today. So to do that, start to take gentle circles. Moving with your breath, lubricating your joint, and remembering what your range of motion is. So this is a big circle, but if a big circle is like not, not happening for you today, your alternative is a small circle. Just draw with your elbow. Now go in the opposite direction, big or small. We're not forcing anything, we're just feeling good. Opening up, getting more limber, limber knocking off the rust. <sighs> On your next inhalation, come all the way up, stretch tall, and float that arm down, let it completely relax. Opposite side, inhale the right arm up, exhale over to the left, both sit bones are on the ground. We're still grounded to our mat or whatever it is we're sitting on. We're just stretching and moving from the hips upwards. And then start your circles, big or small. Close your eyes and listen to the cracks, the creaks, and the sounds of that movement in your shoulder make today. Notice if those sounds start to get a little quieter, the more circles you make. And we'll go in the opposite direction. Perfect. Ready? Inhale all the way up, nice and tall, straightening the spine, floating the arm down. And then squeeze your shoulders all the way up to your ears. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze really tight and let it go. And just feel all of that tension moving out from the shoulder joint. Okay, this one feels really nice. It kind of helps to get rid of that whole knitting neck thing that we can get sometimes when we're looking down too much. So take your hands and place them on your chest, on the sternum, just below the collarbone here. And you're going to grip onto the muscles that are underneath the skin, okay? So pulling those muscles slightly downwards, you're going to lift the head up. And see if you can't feel a little stretch through the neck, the front of the neck. If you'd like to deepen the stretch, then you're going to jut your jaw forward like an English bulldog and stretch some more. Gently rock your head infinitesimally from side to side. Feeling the stretch through the 
the muscles of the neck. Spine stays straight and movements just in the throat, the neck, and the chest. And then release. Ooh. Slightly uncomfortable, but like Brussels sprouts, good for you. Alrighty. Our next one, we're going to take our strap. And we're going to, um, you're going to play with the distance between your hands. You might find as you do this exercise, you want more or less distance, but this is how we do it. Sitting up nice and tall. Actually, I'm gonna get out of Sukhasana. You might want to as well and move on to your heels. Okay, so here we are. Spine is nice and straight. We're gonna take that strap all the way up and then making those adjustments for width between the hands Bring that strap behind you until you get to that place of sweet discomfort. Notice if your low back started to arch and you pressed your, you're pressing your chest forward. If that's the case, pull it back and use your abdominal muscles to do that. Your abdominal muscles act like a corset, wrapping around your spine and keeping everything safe, protected and neutral. This way we can isolate the stretch just in the shoulders. Breathe as deeply as you can and enjoy that opening and that stress that we're applying to the shoulder joint. It's not a negative stress, there is no pain, but stress that will produce positive results when we release. Perfect. One more deep breath. And release. Good, shake it out. Right on, let's come on to all fours, that's easy. A few cat cows, and we're going to do cat cows with our shoulders. So pushing the shoulders down, arching the belly, looking up. This is our cow. And then when we pull everything in, we tuck the tailbone, we tuck the belly button, and then we push those shoulders up and away so there's a lot of movement in the shoulder joint. Let's try it again. Dropping the shoulders, lifting the chest, look up. Tuck everything in, push the shoulders away. Look down. And with that particular focus on your shoulders, move through a few cat cows more. Using your breath. To move the body. Last one. Just stay here in your cat, cat, meow. And then back onto your heels. Shrug the shoulders up. Hold them tight. This is uncomfortable. And let it go. Oh, that feels better. Last one, make your way down onto the mat. Okay, now, if you've got a block or a pillow or any other thing that could um, serve as a landing place for your knees, you're gonna put that on your right side. Arms are out at your sides and your shoulders are gluing themselves down into the mat. Bring your knees up. And we're just going to twist the bottom half of our body down over to the right until you land on whatever is there for you. If you can get your knees all the way to the floor and your shoulders are still glued to the mat, then yay. But it's early in the morning for me, that's not going to happen. I don't want to work hard. I don't want to have to use my abdominals to let my legs stay where they are. So that's why it's so important to have that support there. Plus it feels good. All right, now use your abdominals, engage the core, squeeze back to center. Get your support on the other side. Shoulders glued down. And then all the way over to the left. 
Now, if you happen to have two blocks or whatever it is, two pillows that you're using for support, then this next bit is really fun. So you're going to squeeze up and over, squeeze up and over. So it's a little bit of core, but it's mostly a lot of letting go and stretching. Almost there. You can stay, you know, still on one side and then the other, or you could do this rotation. Last one. Come back to center. Give yourself a big hug. <laughs> Roll on to your side and come on up. And just like that, our shoulders feel a lot better. Thank you so much for practicing with me and I'll see you next time.